misère, let's go on our feet. His mercy is never come to an end. There are new every morning. Always. Worship him. Before your presence, we submit our spirit, our soul, and body before your altar. Holy Spirit divine, the altar of life. All we have is all you have given unto us. We have come to say thank you. We have come to say thank you. We have come to say thank you. Father, today, oh God. Let the abundance of your light, O oh God, penetrate every life here. That none will go back home the same. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Shout a big hallelujah. Have your seat very quickly. And if you're happy like me, I want you to show joy to someone sitting close to you. So welcome to the last Sunday in the month of June. It's a privilege to be here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you excited? Are you excited? The Lord will make your joy to be full in Jesus' name. This morning, we are seeing the last Sunday of the month of June. And this month has been a very wonderful month, going through a very powerful series of messages that the Lord has laid in the heart of the church. I want to thank God for the church leadership and also for our pastor who is away. May the Lord bless him and lead him safely in Jesus' name. This morning, let's open our Bible to the book of Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, I want to read from verse 1 to 3. Genesis 1, 1 to 3. Media, please, uh, should be fast with there. Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1 to 3. The Bible says, in the beginning, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of, the, of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now we see in this uh, verse of the Bible that has been the anchor of our message this month, 
that something was happening to the earth that God created. If you are a deep Bible scholar, you will understand that as a time between the beginning and when God came to say, let there be light, that something had happened to the earth that God created in the beginning, and God was about to restore that which was taken out of his creation. And God began to speak and say, let there be light. So light is always the beginning of God's work. Praise the Lord. It's always the beginning of God's work. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 60 verse 2, Isaiah 60 verse 2, the Bible talks about that darkness shall cover the earth and there shall be great darkness all over the earth. What is darkness in the mind of God? In the mind of God, darkness is the lack of wisdom. It is lack of knowledge in the heart of man. It is lack of knowledge on earth. That is what darkness means. Once there is the lack of the wisdom and the knowledge of God in a generation, that generation is plunged into darkness. Hallelujah. Because when the knowledge of God is lacking, wickedness is amplified. Evil is amplified. Sodomy is amplified. There is, that, 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 that there is a siege on every life, whether it is business, whether it is family, there is crisis in, the, in people's health because there is lack of wisdom of God in that generation. That is why the Bible said in, in the book of Hosea 4, 6, it said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So what the light of God means is the knowledge of God. It's the knowledge of God. It's the revelation of the word of God that brings understanding to the heart of men. So when we have a people who are living without the knowledge of God, God sees it that this generation does not have light in them. As you mean you are in a room and you are meant to spend seven days in that room, and that room has darkness, but someone has already placed food for every day that you will spend in that room, but because of darkness in that room, you cannot see the food. You are going to spend the seven days in that room, not eating anything because of what? You do not have the light to see that is something that is placed in that room for you to eat. That is why God is saying, whenever there is lack of light, knowledge of what is available, is missing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So light is powerful, but the light of God is not the powerful. Light of God is pure. Hallelujah. It delivers, it shows you the way to your inheritance. It shows you the way to the thing that God has prepared for you. The light of God brings direction. The light of God shows you the way out of darkness. It doesn't matter where you are coming from. The moment you are Counter the light of God in your life. Everything becomes very, very clear for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So today I'll be talking to us on the way to his marvelous light. The way to his marvelous light. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How do you encounter his marvelous light? You have seen what light can do. But there is a way to the marvelous light of God. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 130. Let's see together. Psalm 119 verse 130. The Bible says that the entrance of the world giveth light and giveth understanding to the simple. The entrance of thy light of the world. The entrance of the word of God is the source of light. Praise the Lord. God's word is wrapped. God's light is wrapped in his word. It's wrapped in his word. When God wants to send you his light, he sends you his word. If you can decode the word, you will see the light. God does not send you light as light as you see. He sends you a message. He sent you a coded message. In a season of your life, God sent you a word for that season. But many do not pay attention to the word. Many trivialize the word of God. It's the last thing that many want to pay attention to. But God's light is covered, is wrapped in that word of God. The essence of this word of God is to give you understanding on what you are passing through. Don't look for physical bulb. Don't look for the sun. 
Hallelujah. Don't confuse the brightness of the day with the light we're talking about. We are talking about the knowledge, the wisdom that is contained in the mystery of his word. Are you a word searcher? Are you a word digger? How much of the word of God do you carry inside of you? How much of the word of God do you pant? Do you pant for every day? The Bible says, as, you, as, 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 as the deer pants for water, so my heart pants after you, oh God. Those who want to see the light of God, they pant, they gravitate, they pursue the word of God until they find that word for that season. How much of the word of God are you seeking? How much of him are you searching? How much of him are you asking for? Lord, show me your word. You might be a philosopher, but God's word cannot be found in philosophy. You can be an engineer, but God's word can, can, cannot be found in engineering. Listen to me. You might think you are doing very well. You might think that you are rich, that you are doing very well. But the day you encounter the light of God through his word, you find that you have been wasting your life all these years. I put Isaiah. Isaiah was prophesying and prophesying. When he came to chapter 6, the Lord opened his eyes and he saw the glory of God. He said, woe unto me, for I am undone. I am a man with unclean lips and I dwell among unclean people. Because a time came in his life, he saw the word of God. He saw the glory of God. Are you asking the Lord, Father, open my eyes to see the word you have for me. And it's the word of God for you in this month of June. Have you discovered it? Have you found it? Have you found it? The Bible says, in Hebrew 4 verse 12, it said, Thy word for, for the word of God is living and powerful. In 11 verse 13, in, in, in the book of Hebrews 11, 11 verse 3, the Bible says that the word of God framed the world. You can hang your life on the word of God and it will stand. You can hang your family on the word of God and it will stand. You can hang your career on the word of God and it will stand. You can hang your health. You can hang your future on the word of God and it will stand. The word of God suspends the earth in its place. It is the most stable creation that man has seen. If you want to see his light, search his word. Hang your life on it. Hang your life on it. Number two, seek the spoken word. Seek the spoken word. Throughout generation, God communicates his light through his spoken word. Because God is speaking right now. The word of God travels from the depth of the mind of God and finds expression in you in each season. In each season. That is why in the book of Isaiah chapter 38 verse 4 and 5, the Bible says, And the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. In verse 5 he said, Go and tell Hezekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of David your father, I have heard your prayers, I have seen your tears, surely I will add to your days 15 years. The word of the Lord came to me. Hezekiah was at the point of death. He was at the point of death. God has sent him a message and said, you are going to die. Prepare your house. But he went to God in prayer. God had to speak again. God will speak again over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. He said, and the word of God came to me. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 11. Again, the word of God came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? The word of God comes to you and says, what do you see? Listen to me. Listen to me. In a season of your life, the word of God has to come to you again and again and again and again and again until you get to where you're going. Don't keep asking, Lord, speak to me. Lord, speak to me. Lord, speak to me. That is how light comes. The moment God stops speaking, Life becomes difficult. Life becomes difficult. The question is, what are you hearing from God concerning your life now? That is the source of your light. That is the word of God for every season. When I darkness or barrenness in the family, that is the word of God for that season. When you're sick in your body, that is the word of God for that season. 
and it is in that word that your light would come. Praise the Lord. It's in that your light will come. God has to speak to you again and again and again. That's so why you're going to pray and say, Lord, do not be silent over me. Do not be silent over me. Do not be silent over me. Any, any, anyone that has silence of God over him, that person is in trouble. You are in trouble. The greatest undoing of any man is that God is silent over your case. When God is silent over your family, you have to unlock heaven. You must unlock heaven. When God is silent over your finance, you must unlock heaven. Because that is the source of your light. God speaks again and again. And the word of God came to me. When last we hear the word of God? Abraham was called by God. This is chapter 12. In chapter 15, God made a covenant with him. Probably it's 80 years at that point. But for a long time, he did not hear from God. The whole of chapter 16 of Genesis, you will not hear God say it to Abraham. That was when he fell into Haggai and Ishmael. He fell into the trap. Because he was not hearing from God. God reappeared in chapter 17 and said, Abraham, be thou perfect and walk before me. God came back to him again. The moment your antenna is cut off from heaven, your life begins to spiral into error. You begin to make human judgment. You begin to connect in human form. In human form. At that point, your life begins to drift away from the plan and purpose of God for you. That is why, listen to me, for your light to shine daily, you must connect to what God is saying right now. Right now. Right now. That is why you have to pray and say, Lord, do not be silent over my life. You can't afford to, 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 to live like that. You can't afford to live a week without saying, well, this is what God is saying. It's dangerous. The world we live in has no room for, for, for that. It's a daily news that must come from heaven to say, my daughter, this is where to go. My son, this is where to go. Heaven must speak to you. You must unlock heaven. You must start it. You must pay the price. And heaven says, my daughter, I will have a word for you. No wonder the psalmist began to cry. Psalm 17 verse 9. Psalm 17 verse 9. He said, we do not see our signs. He said, there is no longer any prophet. Nor is there any among us who knows how long. First Samuel 3 verse 1. The Bible said that now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was scarce. Was rare in those days. That was why Eli had a problem. Because the word of God was rare. They couldn't hear. They couldn't hear. It's a dangerous thing for you to live without hearing from God. You are in darkness. That's why today I'm going to pray. Say, Lord, don't be silent over me. Don't be silent over me. For I will perish. I will walk away. I will wander away. My, my best endeavor is nothing without you, O oh God. Don't be silent over my life. Don't be silent over my generation. Oh, my family, oh God. Many things will go wrong if you go silent over me. I'm going to pray today. Say, Lord, this month of June, this many few days, oh Lord, I want to hear from your heart. I want to hear from your heart. I want to hear from your heart. The Sabbath began to pray and say, we do not see our signs anymore. I want to see my signs again. I want to hear from you again. I want to hear the thunder of heaven. I want to hear from the throne of grace. What am I if I don't hear the voice of my father? What am I if the essence of days touch his eyes, his ears, his mouth shut over me? I will be like a city without green vegetation. I will be like a city a deserted. I want to pray and say, Lord, my father, my father, do not be silent. Silence over me. When it's time to pray, don't be quiet. Don't be quiet. As we begin to whine and to pray, when the Lord speaks, be careful not to doubt him. Because the Lord will speak to you. Be careful not to doubt him. 
There are many things around you that will challenge the word of God. The book of Luke chapter 1, verse 18 to 20, we saw the account of Zechariah, a man of God who have grown old and still serving the Lord faithfully. He's a priest before the order of the Lord. And the Bible says on that day that Zechariah was with the Lord and the angel of God, the archangel of God, came into the place of, 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 of sacrifice and said, Zechariah, I have a good news for you. I have a good tidings for you. The Lord have heard your prayer. You are going to bear a child. You've waited for all these days. And the word of God came to Zechariah. And at that moment... Zachariah said, how can it be? I am old. My wife is old. You can be a pastor and that God. You can be a pastor and that God. You can be in this house and that God. It doesn't matter how old or how young you are in faith. You can that God. Of you must say, Lord, deliver me from the doubt of myself. You are the doubt that God is going to deliver from. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And thank God for God. God loves his Zachariah so much. The angel of Zachariah, if I leave you to keep speaking, you will speak yourself out of this blessing. Shut up. If you keep talking, if you keep meditating, if you keep trying to analyze it, trying to find the God answer, that you will speak yourself out of what God is about to do. Shut up for a season. Until I finish the work, the child must come. He shut his mouth up. Can you shut up for this and allow God to do what he wants to do? Can you stop complaining? Can you stop complaining? Can you stop crying and say, Lord, we have said it. I believe it will come to pass. Be careful not to speak yourself out of what God is about to do. God will speak again. He will speak again. He will speak again. He will speak again in the mighty name of Jesus. Today, we are going to pray. We are going to pray. Heaven, heaven knows what you did. Heaven knows the darkness around you. He knows what the enemy thought about you. That's why he has not left you behind. That's why as we go to God in prayer, God said we should pray and ask the Lord, Father, do not be silent over me. Don't be silent over me. And when he begins to speak, be careful not to doubt him. If you don't understand it, keep quiet. Praise the Lord. Keep quiet. Don't even tell your husband if you don't understand it. Be like Abraham. Be like Abraham. God said, go and take this son and offer him a sacrifice. He didn't even tell the wife. He just obeyed God like a fool. Be a fool before men to get what God has for you. Be a fool before men. Don't be a wise, a wise person to start thinking and start trying to contain it within your own mind. Be a fool before God. Your ministry is about to change its, its position. When God begins to give you the revelation, when God begins to speak to you, he will show you things that seems impossible. But be a fool to say, Lord, let your will be done. Be on your feet. Be on your feet. Be on your feet. Choir, please, can you come? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The Lord is speaking to us today. Choir, please, can, can, can you come? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I, I want you to just lift up your voice. And begin to pray that prayer. And say, Lord, do not be silent over me. Begin to pray that prayer. Now, Lord, do not be silent over me. Lord, do not be silent over me. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, do not be silent over me. That someone you feel abandoned. 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 you feel that God has this only himself for me to pray right now. Lord, do not be silent over me. Le kata masa kata yaba. Re prazege de maruse kata. Le kata maso kata yaba. Re prazege de le kata maruse katana. Oh, 
pour you, I'm going to pray. And say, Lord, do not be silent over me. Rekate maso katayaba. Repose kete maso kata. Rekete legade marose katana. Makete le baba baba baba. Rokete kete legate. Rokato la pose kete legata. Rekete kete legate. Repote kete maso kata. Lekete kete maso kata. Holy Ghost everywhere. Lord, let the water begin to flow. Rekete maso kata leba. Repose kete. Somebody Lord, Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, yes. Go ahead and pray, go ahead and pray, go ahead and pray, go ahead and pray. Lord, speak to me once again. Speak to me once again. Lord, once again, once again, once again, once again, once again, once again. Let the word come to me. Let the word come to me. Every area of your life right now. Yes, Lord. Lord, speak to me. Yes. 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 Lord, speak to me, Leka Toyabasa. I need your word for this season. I need your word for this season, yes, Lord. I need your word once again. I need your word once again. You are here, you feel like your wall of the sky is cut off for you from God. You want the Lord to speak to you in a clear language that his word will bring light to your situation. You just need a word from God. I want you to take a step forward. Just come to the altar. And just be on your knees and say, Lord, don't be silent over me. I want to pray for you specially. The situation in your life, you just want God to speak. Men have given you advice, but it's not working. You're just asking the Lord, just one word from you. Just one word from you. Just one word from you. Just one word will do it. One word will do it. Just one word from you. Just one word will do it. Just one word will do it. Just one word. 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 Lord, just one word from you, O God. Don't be silent over me. I need your Lord. Baba Baba Yes Lord Yes Lord Baba 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 Baba
Father, behold your children. They are the seed of Abraham. Saved by the power in the blood. Heaven open over you. May heaven open over you. Father, this one, so God, they've taken a step of faith. They've come to he who said, let there be light. And there was light. From this morning, I decree over your life, heaven will give you a word. Wherever you need the light of God, I should step out of this auditorium this morning. You will see, my daughter, my son, this is the way. Walk in it. In the name of Jesus, Lord, every altar of darkness, every element of darkness, what men have done, Jehovah El Shaddai, Lord, oh God, I arise with the power in the name of Jesus to terminate them right now. You will hear the voice of glory. You will hear the ancient of days. The angels will speak to you. That which you ask of the Lord, the Lord will not be silent over you. In the name of Jesus, concerning your business, the Lord will not be silent over you. Concerning your family, the Lord will not be silent over you in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. It is done. It is done. It is done. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. You turn back to your seat. Beloved, can we continue to give a clap offering unto the Lord this morning? Indeed, if there is anything that is certain from the word that has come forth this hour, is that the Lord is still on the throne. The Lord is still speaking. The question is, am I listening? And even when that word comes, is my obedience complete or is it just partial? The Bible says in the book of 2 Samuel, I believe it's chapter 15, he said, disobedience is like the sin of witchcraft. Is that your obedience is complete or not? The Lord will speak. Thank God for Mary. And God told her she's going to have a child that is going to be the savior of the world. Her human knowledge kicked in. She was like, is this going to be possible? Thank God she said, nevertheless, not, that I want, not as I am thinking it, but as you have spoken. So this morning you are going to just say, Lord, open my eyes, O oh Lord. Open my eyes, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Open my eyes, O oh Lord. Open my eyes, O oh Lord. I am ready to obey. Open my heart, O oh Lord. Open my heart, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Open my heart, O oh Lord. Open my heart, O oh Lord. I am ready to oh. open my ears, O oh Lord. Open my ears, O Lord. Hallelujah. Open my ears, O Lord. Open my ears, O Lord. I am ready to move. From your mouth to God, ears. The Lord, the word says as you have spoken, so he is going to do. I'm trusting that this week as you go forth, the Lord will open your eyes, the Lord will open your heart, the Lord will open your ears and obedience, grace will be released in abundance unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. 
as you go this week, the grace of God for you to shine as light in the midst of darkness, the Lord will release an abundance unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. It shall be a week of triumph for you in every area of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Church, before we share the grace, can we stretch forth our hand to the vessel the Lord has used so wonderfully this morning? Let's pray that in any way virtue has gone out of him, the Lord will fill him back to overflowing. That when next the Lord will desire to use him, the Lord will find him available, faithful, and usable for his purpose. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says the husband man shall be first partaker of the fruit. Let's pray that in his own life as well, the Lord will give him the ears to hear, the eyes to see, the heart to hear, and the grace to obey. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, King of glory. Be thou exalted. Go triumphantly this week and be a light in the midst of a dark world. In the mighty name of Jesus. Can we share the grace together in fellowship? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Turn to somebody and prophesy unto them that surely, goodness of the Lord shall follow you all the days of your life and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you and have a triumphant week.